presents Jan Murray, starring in Dollar a Second. Hi, folks. I'm Ken Roberts. Jan will be with you in just a moment. First, I'd like you to take a look at these. Can you imagine anything more cheerful or inviting on a cold, crisp winter's night than a tray full of steaming, fragrant Mogan David Firesides? I wish you could just taste one. They've got an entirely different, exciting flavor that I think you'll really like. And it's so easy to make Mogan David Firesides. You'll find the recipe in the free Mogan David Recipe Book, along with dozens of other recipes for mixed drinks and all kinds of foods. In fact, the Mogan David Recipe Book is chock full of ideas on how to make ordinary meals taste a lot better. The Mogan David Recipe Book is absolutely free. There's nothing to buy, no box tops, and no coupons to tear out. Just send your name and address on a postcard to Mogan David, Chicago 32, Illinois. We'll send your free copy right away. Here's the address again. Mogan David, Chicago 32, Illinois. This offer is good only in states where it is permitted. Now, here is the star of Dollar a Second, Jan Murray. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Good evening once again. Welcome to Dollar a Second. I hope we have some fun here tonight. I don't see why we shouldn't. And without any further ado, let's meet our first contestant. Ken Roberts, who will it be, please? Well, Jan, our first contestant tonight is somebody that I'm sure you'll enjoy meeting, a housewife from New York, Bernie Sawyer, and here she is. Well, hello. How are you? Pat? Thank you, Pat. Thank you. How are you? Is that Miss Sawyer or Mrs. No, Sawyer? Mrs. Sawyer? Mrs. Sawyer. Mrs. Sawyer. Well, a very lovely young lady. Do you know the way we play dollar a second, Mrs. Sawyer? Yes, I May I call you Bernice? Yes, you may. Thank you. Well, for the benefit of one or two who may be watching who never saw the show before and what took you so long to watch, I would like to explain dollar a second to you. You get a dollar for every second you're up here with me. You can quit me anytime you like, Bernice. Anytime at all, you just say, Mr. Murray or Jan, please. You, you can call me Jan. <laughs> Say, Jan, I would like to quit, and we give you a dollar for every second you're up here. See, quit us whenever you like. However, there's one way, Bernice, in which you can lose all the money you've accumulated. That is by our outside event over which we have no control at all. If that should occur while you're up here, Bernice, then you lose all the money you've accumulated. Now, let's find out what our outside event is for tonight. Tom, ready? What is it, please? Well, Jan, this is the time of the year when daddies all over the world start setting up electric trains for the kids. We have here tonight a Lionel electric train. Now, it takes our train about eight seconds to go all the way around the track and come back into the tunnel where it started from. And how many circles of the track it's going to make tonight depends on a number to be chosen by your on-stage contestant. Okay, Bernice, now, here are, here are envelopes lettered from A to Z. See, now, all of these envelopes have numbers in them specifying the amount of times that train must go around the track. The numbers range anywhere from one to 200. Now, you pick your own fate here. Okay, Bernice, you just pick an envelope. We'll see what... All right. Tom, ready? It's envelope uh, letter O. All right, let me just find O here if I can, Jen. <laughs> Let's see, there's Q. Finally, here is O. I'll take a look now and see how many trips we have to make. Well, I've got the number right here, and to help us record the number, we have a very good friend of your on-stage contestants, Mrs. Sawyers, and she's Miss Marilyn Gutkin. And Miss Gutkin, every time that the train makes a complete circle of the track, Please just put a mark up here on our board. And Jan, if and when we reach this number, I'll let you know, and that'll be our outside event for tonight. Okay, Bernice, now maybe one trip, two trips, 100 trips, 40 trips, we don't know. But when that reaches the amount you selected, the number specified in this envelope, we're going to be notified. That's going to be our outside event, and I'm going to put the envelope right here so we can check with it later. Okay? Ready to play dollar a second now. Ready. Is the Morgan David clock ready, Ken? Yes, Jan, it's all ready. Good. At the sound of the cash register, you start making a dollar a second. <clears throat> Here we go. Now, Bernice, we're going to start you off with a cute little game, I think. See, I'm going to read a list of questions. Now, you listen closely. See, I'm going to read a list of questions, but you don't answer them as I ask them. Instead, you answer each question one question later. In other words, the first question, supposing the first question I ask is, uh, 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 who was the blonde star of the movie? Pfft. See, well, you don't answer, right? You just keep that in your mind, see? Then, if I say to you, who... Uh, 
what's the name of Roy Rogers' horse, you would say Judy Holiday, because that was the answer to the first question, see? Then if I say, who won Miss America contest last year, you'd say Trigger, because that was the answer to the question before. You got the idea? Oh, uh, yeah, sure, she says. She's getting ready to pay a penalty. All right, now let's go. Don't forget. It. Don't answer the first one. Keep it in your mind. Now, who plays the part of the barefoot contessa? Just hold it up there. Answer it the second time. Okay. Who does your husband take out of the closet? I mean, what does your husband take? Ooh. What does your husband take out of the closet when it's raining? Ava Gardner. Uh, who is Harry James married to? An umbrella. Who's the heavyweight champion of the world? Betty Grable. What American, uh, what, a, what American grandmother became famous for her paintings? Rocky Marciano. <laughs> who was the manager of the New York Yankees? Grandma Moses. Who became famous for posing on a calendar? Casey Stengel. Is that true? <laughs> uh, what's the name of the greatest show on earth? Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. <laughs> Who rode through the streets yelling the British are coming? Barnum and Bailey. <laughs> Who's the most famous <laughs> pianist on television? Uh, Paul Shh. Revere. Who's married to Park Kettle? Liberace. <laughs> Who's the catcher? Who's the catcher for the New York Yankees? Mark Hell. Who did the dance of the Seven Veils in Salome? Uh, Yogi Bear. Please don't help. What's the name of Roy Rogers' famous horse? One, two, three. Rita Hayward. <laughs> Who did the dance of the Seven Veils in Salome? The question before, which is supposed to answer now. And boy, oh boy, you have to pay a penalty, and there we go. All right, dear. Now, you know the way our game goes. As soon as you make a mistake, you have to pay a penalty. And if you pick the unlucky number in our penalty, Bernice, you're out of the game. You can't continue with us any longer. However, we'll still give you a dollar for every second you're up here providing the outside event doesn't come in. Now, in your penalty, we're <clears throat> we have a real cute one for you, and your husband is going to pay your penalty for you, okay? Let's see wh where the husband is, please. There is that darling. There is that darling boy. Now, come here, Bernice. I know he looks a little silly back there, but actually, he's about to perform a very important chore. You see, he's a schoolmaster. Your husband is a schoolmaster of a very tough school for boys. The school is called... P.S. 4 to 1. That's the odds they're laying. He doesn't get out of here alive tonight, see? <laughs> now, he's about to ring the school bell because it's 5 o'clock and he wants to notify all the little children to come in and get ready for dinner. See? Now, you see these five ropes? Well, four of these ropes are, are connected to the bell, the school bell. I want you to pick one of the ropes, hand it to your husband. He'll chime five times. He will ring the bell, and you'll be safe. One of these ropes is attached to an air raid siren. If you pick that one, your husband will be making scholastic history. <laughs> It'll be the first time in the annals of all schooldom. Is there such a word? <laughs> first time in the history of going to school that the children will be present and the teacher will be absent. <laughs> if you pick the unlucky one, okay? Now, I want you to pick a rope and then get out of harm's way, dear, because we won't know whether <laughs> your husband is safe or not till after the bell chimes five times. See, which rope do you choose? One, two, three, four, five, which one? Uh, Hurry up now. Talk fast. Hurry up. You're getting a dollar a second. Number two, come with me. Just hold on to that, sir. You come with me. Let's get out of the way. Go. Two hundred and sixty-nine seconds, well, Jan. Well, you got two hundred sixty-nine dollars. What do you want to do? You want to continue? Don't forget, you're getting a dollar for every second you're up here. But that train is going around, you know. If the outside event comes in, you're going to lose all the money. What do you want to do? I don't want to frighten you. What? What? Make up your mind. Hurry up. Answer. Yes, dear. What? What? Oh, You'll stay. All right. Good. We have a cute little game for you now, Bernice. Well, it's a little quiz, actually. I'm going to name some animals, and you name their homes. For instance, if I said goldfish, you'd say aquarium or bowl. But you must name the actual place they live and sleep in. Just saying water or forest won't do. Okay? Dog. House. Dog house. A dog house is good. Or a kennel horse. A stable. Good cow. Barn. Pig. A pen. Bee. A hive. Rabbit. A hutch. Chicken. A, 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 a chicken, chicken coop. Shh. Pull it. You tell her. This kid, she's smarter than the whole gang of us here. <laughs> I'm worrying she doesn't break the company. You're helping her out. Very good, you're very bright, Bernice. All right. Ants. 
Ants. Uh, an ant hill? Right, lions. Uh, One, uh, uh, two. Uh, uh, Dan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gopher. A hole. <laughs> Eagle. A nest. Doves. One, uh, uh, two, three. Coat. Coat, C-O-T-E. All right, pick yourself another number for your husband. I didn't know it if it wasn't written here. I'll tell you the truth. This kid's pretty bright. Pick a number. Hurry up. Which one? Four. Right, say it out loud. Four. 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 Sir, here. Would you just ring that five times? Let's get out of the way. Seconds, Jan. Oh, money is piling up for these. You got three hundred and eighty dollars. What do you want to do now, honey? You're getting a dollar a second, but don't forget that train is going around. And if that should come in while you're here, you know, boy, you're gonna lose all the money you've accumulated. What do you say? What do you want to do? You wanna continue? You wanna quit? Anything you like? I'll stay. You'll stay. <laughs> all right, then let's go ahead. Here we go. Bat. Bat. Uh, cave. Cave is good. Mouse. Shh. Mouse hole. Hornets. Uh 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 uh. Hoy? Uh uh. uh, uh. A nest, hornet's nest. We have three numbers left for your husband. One, three, and five. Which one do you pick, Bernice? Which one? Hurry up. One. One. All right, try number one, sir. Ring it slowly. Let's get out of harm's way. but he'll be absent. That's... Well, you picked the unlucky number in our penalty, dear, but the outside event hasn't occurred. You can't continue playing with us any longer, but we're going to give you a dollar for every second you've been up here. And she was very bright. Wasn't she a bright, wonderful contestant? <laughs> and I'm surely glad you won yourself a lot of money, but before we find out how much you did win, let's check with the outside event and let's see how close you came to losing all this money. Tom? Well, Jan? It was envelope zero, envelope, or oh rather, <laughs> envelope O called for 96 trips by our train, and when your contestants stopped making a dollar a second, we had completed 58 of them. Well, you still had a long way to go. You had a long way to go, Bernice. You really picked yourself a long, uh, a long number, uh, a great amount of times for that train to go around. Let's find out how much money you won. Ken? 438 seconds was the Boy, amount of time. Boy, 438 seconds. That's 438 dollars. And how many correct answers did she have? She had 24 correct answers. Well, we'll give her a dollar for each correct answer. And that brings it to a grand total of... 462 dollars. Morgan David Wine is happy to give you 462 dollars. For me, good luck to you, honey. Wonderful. Right over there. And incidentally, Bernice, pick up our Mogan David recipe book. Oh, you'll just love that. You folks sent for it. Honestly, it's really a terrific book. You know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this afternoon, some of us were around uh, the theater. I came down a little early, and there weren't too many of us around, just the producer, the director, some of our wonderful ABC stagehands and our wonderful uh, camera crew and everything. And we were testing props and whatnot just to try to make sure everything runs smoothly tonight. Well, you know the way guys are. We started talking and we started wondering how many people watching Dollar a Second tonight are entertaining company. Now, I'll bet you a great many of you do have friends over right now. And sometime during the evening, you'll be serving them something to eat and drink. Well, naturally, I hope you'll be serving them Mogan David wine because I think both you and your guests will love it. You see, the nice thing about serving Mogan David wine is that it appeals to almost everyone. Even men and women who don't like other beverages or folks who've never tasted wine, even they like the Concord grape taste of Mogan David. And remember too, and this is very important, it's so inexpensive you can afford to serve it as often as you like. So if you haven't got any Mogan David in your refrigerator, ladies and gentlemen, put it on your shopping list for tomorrow so that you'll be sure to have some on hand the next time you have company. Give it a try. Won't you? <laughs> Please. Thank you, Janet. Janet, really do give it a try. You'll love it. Jen, who's our next contestant, please? 
Right now, Jan, from Houston, Texas, the clothing fitter and his wife, Conrad and Mary Labese. Here they are. Well, hello. How are you? Mary, Conrad, thank you. Well, I see we got you dressed up kind of cute, Conrad. We'll, uh, we'll explain to you later why we dressed you up like this. Of course, you know by now that there's a reason for it. And you know the way we play dollar a second. You get a dollar for every second you're up here. Quit us whenever you like. The only way you can lose all the money you've accumulated is by our outside event. And the outside event tonight are those wonderful little trains going around around the track. And how many times it's going to go around depends on the number you choose. So, dear, here are the envelopes lettered from A to Z. Mary, you the lucky one in the family? You pick the envelope. Fine, it's envelope G, Tom. All right, here we have envelope G, and I'll take a look and see how many trips we make. And by the way, we have a new dispatcher to keep track of our trips, and he's Mr. Labisi's brother, Frank, right here beside me. So, Jan, as soon as we reach this number, I'll let you know, and that'll be our outside event for tonight. Okay, got the idea, Mary, Conrad? Sure. All right, now I'm going to put the envelope here. We'll check with it later. I don't know now if it's one trip, 100 trips, 20 trips, 30 trips, maybe over in a minute, two minutes, five minutes, who can tell? But if and when that train makes the amount of trips specified here, that's going to be it, the outside event. Okay? Sure. Ready to play dollar a second? Right. Is the Morgan David clock ready, Ken? Yes, Jan, it's all ready. All right, the sound of the cash register, you start making a dollar a second. There it is. I've already made three bucks. <laughs> <coughs> now, would you bring that out, please? Fine. Fine. Now, kids, I'll tell you what. Would you, would you go behind this screen? Just both of you. You go on this side, and you on that side. And I'm going to explain this game to you, see? This is a little game called male and female. You stand behind the screen, and, and, and I'll explain what's going to happen, see? Inside, you'll each find a little stool to sit on. You see the little stool back there? Okay. You sit down on it. See, when we stop playing, you both sit down behind your screens, and I'm going to read a list of words. Now, we have another screen here, ladies and gentlemen, on this side, so that they can't see each other once they're seated. They can't see one another, see? Now, I'm going to read a list of words. If the word is masculine, such as king, you, sir, pop your head up. If the word, and you, dear, remain seated where you are. But if the word I read is feminine, such as queen, you, dear, you pop your head up and you remain seated. I only want to see one head at a time or there'll be a penalty. Okay? Got the game? Now start seated. Both of you sit down. Don't forget, male, sir, you pop your head up. Female, you. Don't signal each other back there. No cheating. Play it good. Here we go now. <clears throat> Empress. And sit right down, up and down. We got to move like this, you know, like a yo-yo. All right. Uncle. Matron. Flapper. Flapper. One, two, three. You don't know what a flapper is, do you? Come with me. I'll say what a flapper is. Come on out, sir. You made a little... Well, you didn't think this doll was a flapper, did you? Flapper, you should have jumped right up. All right, now you made a little mistake and you know the way our penalties go. <laughs> if you pick the unlucky number in the penalty, you're out of the game. You can't continue with us, but we'll still give you a dollar for every second you're up here. Now, let's see their penalty, please. Oh, boy, look at that. Now, Conrad, the first thing you see over there is that nice pool of water. Add a girl, Pat, dear. Show them the water. You see it? Now, here's what I want you to do, sir. Would you just climb up there first? You just climb. You come with me, dear. You climb up there, help them up, Vince, and have them be seated. All right? You all right? You comfortable? Hold on tight now. Hold on tight. Now, you sit down here. You sit right over here, dear, and I'm going to explain the penalty to you. See? Here we have a telephone. And here we have five envelopes. And each envelope is a different telephone number. I want you to pick one of these envelopes, dial the number that's written on the envelope, see? Now, in four of these envelopes, we know that you're going to get an answer. Somebody is home. We know this. You'll get an answer, see? And you, as soon as you hear somebody say hello, you yell, I got somebody, and we'll stop your husband from going into that pool. Because the minute you start dialing, he starts to move, see? Now, one of these envelopes has a telephone number and nobody is home. We know that. There'll be no answer. You won't be able to yell, I've got somebody. In fact, the next voice you hear will be that of your husband yelling, help, life God, you know. All right, got the idea? Pick an envelope. Open it. Open it, start dialing.
Thank you, Uncle Max. All right, come on. That was my uncle. You're safe. Come on, boy. You kids are safe. Come on. How long have they been up here? 254 seconds, Chad. Well, you got yourself 254 dollars. You want to quit? You want to continue? What do you want to do? Want You're to getting a dollar a second, but don't forget that train is going around, boy. I don't know how many times it has to go around. Still want to stay on. Let's bring that thing out. We're going to see how you know the feminine and masculine. Come on, dear. Hurry up now. Sit behind here. All right? You all set? Here we go. Don't forget, if the word suggests masculine, you jump up. Feminine, you. Here we go. Squaw. Squaw. Sultan. Vixen. Yeah, huh? Oh, no. Come on here. Come on here. Oh, no. Come here. Vixen is a female fox. We want to get this fat here. Will you remove the chair, please? Would you get up there? All right. Help him up. Help him up. Come on, dear. I'm by the phone. Incidentally, the last number she picked, the phone number was Plaza 72425. Right? We got an answer at that one. Let's see this. There it is. Not dialing. That a girl? What do you want to do now? Play. You want to continue? Getting a dollar a second. That train is gone. I hate to keep reminding you, but I feel I must. Still want to continue. Yeah. Getting a dollar a second. Bring it out. Here we go. Hurry up, Mary. Get behind here. Let's see if you know. <laughs> here we go. Male. You. Female. You. Sit down. <laughs> this guy jumped up, and I'm just explaining the game. All right. Here we go. All right. Hold it. Duke. Uh, bachelor. Chanteuse. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is nervous. He keeps jumping up and down. He doesn't know what. Go on, get up there, pal. Up. <laughs> Which one do you pick this time? Pilot, make sure you don't make a mistake now. Go ahead now. Hudson. Two at it, girl. second you want to quit you want to continue what do you want to do kids play. up to you play. the train is going dear you still want to play bring it out here we go all right mary and don't be so jittery oh. oh boy now he doesn't get up that was the outside event conrad wait a minute Let's check, let's check with Tom Reddy and see what happened. Tom? Jan, it was envelope G and it called for 60 trips and Mr. Labisi's brother registered 60 trips on our blackboard. That's the outside event. There it is, 60 trips right here. See it, Conrad? Right. Mary, you picked it yourself. The outside event has come in. Of course, I'm sorry, but you were great sports and we did have a lot of fun with you. Tell me, how long were they up here? 474 seconds, Jan. Well, Conrad, Mary, you lost yourself the big money, $474. <coughs> and uh, how many correct answers did they have? They had seven correct answers. Seven. I'll tell you what, they were darn nice people, wonderful sports, are good contestants. Instead of a dollar, let's give them $10 for each correct answer, and we'll make it $70, okay? <laughs> good luck to you. And thank you for being a dollar a second. Well, that's the way the game goes. You can quit us whenever you like. Take the money or lose the money. It's up to you. 
And now, Ken, who's our next contestant, please? Well, before we meet our next contestant, Jan, I'd like the folks to take a look at this really mountain of mail in front of me. You know, quite a few people have written to us telling us how much they've enjoyed Morgan David wine since they first heard about it on Dollar a Second. For instance, here's a letter I'd like to read to you right now. This one comes to us from uh, Mrs. Minnie Fitzpatrick in New York City, and she says, I never dreamed that wine could taste so good. Why, you could actually taste the flavor of real Concord grapes in Mogan David wine. Well, thank you very, very much, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. We're awfully glad that you enjoyed Mogan David. And folks, may I suggest that you try Mogan David? Even if you've never tasted wine before, or even if you've never liked ordinary wines, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you taste Mogan David. It really does taste different from any other wine. And I think you like it better than any other beverage. So, next time you're shopping, get a decanter of Mogan David wine for your family. And for added pleasure, send for our Mogan David recipe book, ladies and gentlemen. You'll just love having it, I'm telling you. And now, Kenneth, who's our next contestant? Well, Jan, we'd like you to be the patrolman from New York City, Harold Boyd. Hiya, Harold. Well, hiya. Hiya. Thank you, Jack. Hello, Harold. Welcome to Dollar a Second. Did Kenneth say you're a patrolman? Police department? All right, Harold. Nice having you on our show. And you know the way we play Dollar a Second. You get a dollar for every second you're up here. Quit us whenever you like. And the one way you can lose all the money you've accumulated, and we just saw it happen, is by our outside event. Tonight, the outside event, the little train. So you pick the envelope yourself, which will specify how many times that little train is to go around the track. Harold, I hope you're lucky. It is envelope F. All right, let me find envelope F. I have it right here, and by the way, we have another new dispatcher, and she's Mr. Boyd's wife, Edith, standing right beside me. She's going to register it on the board as we circle the track, and if and when we reach this number, Jan, I'll let you know for our outside event. Okay, Harold, may take a minute, two minutes, ten minutes. You picked it yourself, and we're going to leave it right here. Harold, you're a patrolman. I can trust you not to peek, right? <laughs> okay, we'll check with that a little later. You ready to play dollar a second? Good. At the sound of cash register, you start making a dollar a second. <laughs> what was that? Is that the show? That's exactly what it is, Simultaneously yeah, with the, the cash register, huh? How about that? How long was he up there? About a second and a half? Well, the clock says three seconds, Jan. Well, all right. <laughs> Well, Harold, you made yourself $3. If you want, you can keep it. You made yourself 3 bucks. You can quit. You can have the $3 with our blessing. However, if you can and you'd like to come back next week, you'll be our very first contestant, and we'll start you off with the $3. What would you like to do? I'll come back. You come back next yes. week. Good luck. Take care of yourself. We'll see you next week, Harold. Good to see you. Harold, you're our very first contestant next week. You know, ladies and gentlemen, all our contestants are from our studio audience, so if you'd like to be a contestant on... A uh, dollar a second. Drop us a postcard for tickets to dollar a second. ABC tickets, 7 West 66th Street, New York City, New York. Until next week, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jan Murray saying good night, good luck, and from Morgan David Wine, to your good health. All right. Dollar a second is presented by Morgan David Wine. Produced and by the Morgan David Wine Corporation, Chicago 32, Illinois. Models down by Junior Sabisky. Second, starring Jan Murray, was directed by Martin Macker. The director is Bill Levin. Produced by Dave Brown. Tune in again next week for Dollar a Second. Conceived by Jean Paul Blondeau and Jean Jacques Vital. Everybody do see do Well, a big and bigger root and up a little data roll that's sticking in a bed, bend a kick and up a dough. Walk right around on a heel and toe. You ain't a regular owl. Swing the lady round and around and out on the left, like swinging on the heel, right, she on the right, and left day. Swing the lady round and around and out on the left, like swinging on the heel, right, she on the right, and left day.
tell you were waiting like a filly at the finish line. Now sit down there, Cousin Alvin. Hi, folks, and welcome to the Old American Barn Dance. Sorry to be a little bit late, but some of the kitchen uh, chickens got loose from the kitchen had to get them back into the roost. You know how that is. We got a good group here for you to entertain you. People like Patsy Montana and Solly Holmes and Kenny Roberts, Johnny Bond, the Candy Mountain Girls, Bob Schaefer and his saddle pals, and just a whole bunch of wonderful people. And uh, I suppose since Cousin Alvin did start the shebang here, we better, when he gets set on an idea, it's just best to humor him. I found that out, so we'll call on him for his rendition. Yeah, uh, well, thank you very much, Bill. That's uh, all right. A uh, big uh, introduction uh, to my song. I've been uh, practicing, and I think I got it down pretty good. So, how's, the, uh, how's the fan uh, mail? It's been coming in very good. My fan uh, mail, yeah, thousands. Uh, <clears throat> thanks a lot for that card, Mom. <laughs> Uh, so at this time, I would like to sing an old favorite of mine called uh, Grandfather Left to Me His Old Brown Pants. Good, cousin, go ahead and sing it for <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather, he at the age of 93 Got disgusted and made up his mind to die And of course he left a will And to my brother Bill Left the real estate which in the town did lie And to my sister Jane He left a watch and chain A house and lot he left a sister Nance But how it made me swear When the lawyer did declare That he left to me his old brown pants Brown pants? Yeah! How they did giggle, how they did yell, even my sister and my dear Isabel. How they would laugh whenever they got the chance, cause grandfather left to me his old brown pants. Wed, so the boys and girls all said, we'll surprise them with an old sewing bee. Oh, yeah. The colors was in great demand, so the old pants come in hand as they ripped them and they joked so merrily. Isabel, the waistband tore, something rolled out on the floor. It's a thousand dollar bill, cried Sister Nance. <laughs> and they nearly all dropped dead when I picked them up and said, now don't you wish you had the old brown pants? <laughs> how they did giggle, how they did yell. Even my sister and my dear Isabel, how they would laugh whenever they got the chance, cause grandfather left to me his old brown pants. 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 You see, Johnny Bond, when you come out here and sing a song like that, you have to sort of uh, put yourself into it. Into you see, it. you have to give the, the folks what they want to hear, you what see. What they want, yeah. You, yeah. you don't just come out here and stand there picking that uh, guitar. Oh. You have to do more than that. Yeah. And if you think you can do any better... Now, wait, 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 just a minute. Now, just waiting, Johnny, for Cousin Alvin to say something like that. Frankly, cousin, I think Johnny Bond can do better. After all, everybody all over the country likes to hear him sing, and he, well, he practices, and, and uh, maybe he can do a little bit better. Can't you, Johnny? Well, I don't know, Bill. You kind of put me on the spot here. Uh, I'll tell you what, Alvin. I won't guarantee you that this will be better. Well, no. I'll just try and make it uh, louder. How, how's that? Yeah. Uh, you come with me. <laughs> <and I'm> listen. <laughs> Way out in old Oklahoma 
In the land of the blue Cimarron I found an Indian maiden And I called her my Cherokee fawn We loved, we courted each other And we named our own wedding day But the great white spirit up yonder Took my Cherokee flower Each night on the prairie, I'm alone with the strumming guitar. Sweet tunes they are playing, reminds me of someone I love. So I'll send a song to the heaven, and I'll call it my cherry. think you've inspired the Candy Mountain girls because Corky and Mary Jane and Sandy said, Bill, can we sing one next? And I said, you bet you, you can. Put the Candy Mountain girls to, uh, say, Candy Mountain girls, don't go away yet. They're heading for the cider and the donuts. Poke your heads through the window there and sing a song for us before you leave, won't you? How about Tiny Cabin Light? Yeah. All right. tell you, we're mighty proud of our Candy Mountain girls. They really do a song upright, don't they? You know, we got to thinking a little bit, put our heads together, and we decided we might have several of the, the youngsters visiting us that have never been down on a farm. So the thought struck us that we'd call on Salty Holmes for his number down on the farm. And you know, our Uncle Tom Corwin, say, there's hardly a farm animal that he can't imitate. So we're going to have good old Uncle Tom kind of join in with Mr. Solly Holmes, who's going to give all you kids the version of Down on the Farm. Solly! Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a little hen down on the farm. That little hen never done any harm. Lays her eggs every day, lays them in the new mown hay, and you can always hear her say, Well, I got a little duck down on the farm. 
Quack, 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 quack. That little duck never done any harm. Quack, 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 quack. Swims in a puddle every day. Never gets in any one way, but you can always hear her say, Quack, 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 quack. Well, I got a little pig down on the farm. Oi, oi, the baby on. That little pig never done any harm. Oi, oi, the baby on. That little pig is sure sweet meat. Walking around on his four feet. That little pig is sure sweet meat. Oi, oi, the baby on. Well, I got a little cat down on the farm. <coughs> that little cat never done any harm. <coughs> Catches mice every day. Catch it white and it catch it gray, and you can always hear it say, Wow! <laughs> 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 oh, I tell ya! See that, kids? Didn't that add up to just a whale of a visit to the farm? <laughs> you doggone betcha. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as all the youngsters around here and up in the old hayloft did, too. Here's something coming up that adds up to a lot of good common sense and fits right into your scheme of living. Yes, sir, if you'll pay attention to this, I think that you'll be thanking yourself. Enough. Good advice. You know, out in Texas way in the plain states, for all the Texas tornadoes, the sand twisters and sandstorms are, why, heavy winds in general are just not too much in the uncommon variety. And what I'm driving at is, we're going to have a boy sing out where the west winds blow. Plus, he's going to put a yodel right down in the valley of those wonderful Rockies. And I'm talking about that yodeling, jumping cowboy, Kenny Roberts. Yes, <laughs> Like the wind that blows across the ground. 
the whole gang got their enjoys out of that. I've been uh, making a study here of a fellow that's doing an awful lot of bowing in the old hayloft. He's a, about the trickiest, fastest, and all-around bestest you'd ever find in this good old USA. His name is Wade Ray, and he's going to play for us Wade's Blues. Wade Ray! <laughs> here in the barn dance, that's for sure. We got a young lady over here who wants to do a little homesteading out west, by the way, quite appropriately, too. It's Patsy Montana asking, give me a home in old Montana. Yeah. Patsy Montana. <laughs> beneath the sun I travel east and I've traveled west now I'm traveling to the place that I love the best give me a home in Montana and a cowboy out Montana and see how happy I'll be give me an old hickory cabin and I won't be crabbing let the Montana moon shine for me I'll find a paradise neath the blue mountain skies the prairie wind croon to me Give me a home in Montana and a cowboy of Montana and see how happy I'll be. How about me? No, not you, Uncle Tom. <laughs> I've seen the city lights turn the night into day. I've bidden farewell to old Broadway. Without a sigh, I'll say goodbye. I'm starting on my way, what's a gravel fly? Give me a home in Montana, and a cowboy of Montana, and see how happy I'll be. Give me an old hickory cabin, and I won't be crabbing, let the Montana moon shine for me. I'll find a paradise neath the blue mountain skies, the prairie wind croon to me. Give me a home in Montana, and a cowboy of Montana, and see how happy I'll be. Oh, you can count on a stellar performance every time from that party. You know, we have a good-looking chap around here at the barn dance, Bob Schaefer, who gets quite a bit of the ladies' attention. And he's going to sing for you, I Hurt Inside, in just a minute. You know, all the performances here of the old American barn dance are made possible by the folks who are going to visit with you right now. And the best way, or one of the best ways, that you can say thank you for a good time is to give them your patronage. What they have to say to you right now really makes good sense. See if I'm not right. Hold on to your hearts, girls. Here's Bob Schaefer's I Hurt Inside. But 
but you don't care You took my love And left this sorrow You made this crown Of thorns I wear I still don't know How come I lost you Without you, I guess that's why I hurt inside. I hurt inside. It's that old heartache. It hurts me so to know you're gone. I have no heart. Tomorrow, no hope or faith to rest upon. The symphony of love has ended. The curtain falls, dear gray and white. I. Land of Goshen, that boy does really torment your emotions, doesn't he? Thanks, Bob. Well, we better get while the getting's good. And as the feller says, the latch string is going to be out, and you're always welcome to drop in on us. Remember the good folks that bring you the old American barn dance? And say, if you drop around here again, you know the pleasure's going to be all ours. Until Uncle Tom spots you coming around again next time, this is Bill Bailey reminding you to have faith in your fellow man. So long. God bless each and every one of you. Swing your partners, everybody swing. Now, Al and left and Al and large. Now, right and left and one and star, right and left and one and star. Now, let's have time to have them swirl with right and left and star again, or right and left and star again. Let's shoot that star to move their round. Promenade your partner round. Promenade. You promenade, you shoot my shoot, and bring the notes to the old. Let me go see the train for the old. One more change and home you go and everybody swing, everybody swing. Side cup to bleed to the right, it's true that couple the lady on the lady to turn around and jet. Turn around lady, lady around and jet. Now get them in the ring and circle hands, circle hands. Right the page, right down the line, you right the page, right down the line, right the page. You turn around and turn my back, right the page, it's right the right the bag. Hurry boys, let's go, right the to and home you go and everybody swing. Thank you.
Chase the rabbit, chase the squirrel, chase the bring around the world. I chase the prosperity.